All right, so good morning, Cyber Warriors. Coming up on the first round of competition this week, uh, I wish everybody the best of luck. And uh, I'm going to go over my final items that we have for the script that we've been building this entire time. Um, and just a, a couple of little additions to it. And, um, you know, hopefully things work out and you still have enough time to test these things uh, before you actually put them into operation on your own systems and, and during the competition. Re remember, please, please test. All right. So anyway, let's get right to it. Alrighty then, just a few more things to finish up our scripts. Let's take a look here. All right, so in the beginning, we have our environmentals. We have several functions that we do. And then directly below the functions, we have all the stuff that goes automatically. We write specifically saying that these are all automatic things. Um, and they're... There's data collection, like getting your running processes, your running services, um, setting a few things automatically within the uh, um, the registry. Um, there's a handful of things that are there. There's a couple more things that I haven't talked about yet, but I kind of want to, and it's this section right here. And I'm going to go over to this text file which has them separated out so we don't get confused uh, first two things are setting up so that your firewall is actually running uh, there may be an instance where the firewall is not running on your system and your antivirus real-time protection is not going either uh, and these are both things that you want to happen so simple command for the net firewall profile uh, for the domains, for the the public, private, um, and, and within the domain, all enabled for true. Uh, so this basically turns on the firewall for all the different profiles that could be enabled on the system. Uh, this other one, set MP preference dash disable real time monitoring, is a little confusing because you want to turn that off. If it is true, then what happens is your real-time monitoring is disabled. It means that your antivirus can't detect stuff when you download it and it comes onto your system. It won't, it won't pick it up. Uh, it'll only detect something that occurs during a scan as opposed to active live protection. You always want your active live protection. So remember in Windows and Microsoft speak, sometimes they say, you know, disable this. And so you have to disable the disable, which actually means enable because double negatives. Um, and then you can also manage your Windows updates using the PowerShell window. But in order to do that, you have a dependency. And that dependency is for NuGet, N-U-G-E-T, which is this, which may or may not be the correct version on your system. So let's take a look to see what version we have on this one. Actually, let's just take a look at the version and the information we can get from this. So get package provider uh, is a quick way to take a look at the information. relatively quick so it has to uh, has to reach out and find it and make sure that it's got the right information there we go okay so it has the version of 2.8.5.208 now our dependency is dot 201 so what we're going to do is just like we are testing for our try and catch loop to see if there is, uh, you know, the variable gets set. We're going to set a variable where the version is only set if we have 
a version number over 20.201. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. We're going to plug that in. Wow, my system is slow right now. So we're going to take a look at nuggets. Okay, so our variable nuggets, because new get, new gets, no, nothing. Okay. So our variable here is set and it's set properly. So we are going to be able to see that this exists. Now, if it exists, then we don't need to get the new one. But if it doesn't exist, we need to get the new one. So we need to update it. And for that, we use this command install package provider with the name with the minimum version and we tell it to force which means I want you to do the thing no matter what anyone else says so even if it's asking for permission we're implying permission is given we're like yes do the thing so how this works is uh, there will be nothing to see because our version is already higher right so nothing happened because our version is better. Um, so that's just something you want to account for just in case the version uh, that you're running on the system that you're working on is less than the, re uh, the requirements. So after that, we have to install the module for PS Windows Update. Uh, allow clobber means that if there's already a version there to go ahead and do it and then force uh, once again is telling it do it don't ask me about it just do it now a couple other things that we want to do and we want to make sure are up and running are running those windows updates and also starting your antivirus scan um, but we don't want them to run in the same window because that can take a long time. We still have other stuff to do. We want to do our user operations. We want to enable password policy items. We want to enable auditing. We want to get back to the meat of everything else. Meanwhile, we want to go ahead and start those processes in their own windows. In order to do that, you actually use a, pro, uh, a Windows a PowerShell command called start process. Now we've done start process. I don't know. We've done get process, but not start process. I don't think. But start process. Oh, we do. We have done start process with run as variable. So this is slightly different. So we're starting the process uh, for PowerShell and we're going to give it an argument list, which is basically the command that we want it to run as soon as it opens up that new window. And that argument list is the command for the Windows Update stuff that we want to do. So this is get Windows Update, accept all, which means pull down everything that you can. We want to force the install. We want to ignore the reboot because if you tell it automatically reboot, It'll, as soon as it's done, it'll reboot and you're in the middle of something. That's that's never a good plan. So you need to be able to have it to where it doesn't reboot automatically. Uh, and even though we have force install here, we also need to tell it to install. Um, it's just a quirk with the command because unless you tell it install, it'll just download the stuff with the force install as opposed to actually install it. And we want the command Microsoft update. Now, there are two arguments or options you can use for this. One is Microsoft update, and the other is Windows update. Now, you can debate the merits with your team on what is better, the Windows update or the Microsoft update. But for us here where we work, we recommend using the Windows update because then it grabs all of the Windows stuff and not just the operating system stuff. So like if there are Office products that need to be updated or anything else that has a Microsoft branding, it will pull all of that down too. If you have Windows Update selected, then it'll ignore all of the rest of that stuff. Um, and it'll only pull down the operating system. Uh, 
which is good in some instances, but not as a general good practice. You want to pull all the relevant updates. So what this will do is just simply push it open into a new window and tell it to do a thing. And then we're going to do the same thing with our antivirus. So start MP scan and the scan type, and we're going to tell it to do a quick scan. And the reason why we tell it to do a quick scan is because we want it to be relatively fast. Uh, you can do a full scan, but depending on the, the power and the resources you have available for your image, it may not be beneficial for you to do that in the finite period of time that you have for a competition. Um, it, it, may, it may be good. Um, but what I would do is I would make sure that I would run a full scan after all of the updates have been completed. And speaking of updates, running that command this one time will only make sure to get it the first time around, not multiple instances. So you need to make sure to go back and check your GUI and update again and again and again until there are no more updates. Or you can continue to use this command to open up a new window to do that. But we're only in the script. I'm only going to call it one time. And then I can go and manually review for those other things. I just want to get the initial install right out of the way. And it just works out a lot better that way. So I'm going to toss. Actually, let's do. No, let's just do them one at a time. I'm going to grab this one, plug that in. And it's got to make sure that it gets the, the appropriate stuff, pulls it down, it'll do its thing. Sometimes it takes a little bit, which is fine, but it's still faster than us trying to manually do it. And what's really cool is it gives you an update and the status of where it is on that. And while it's thinking about that, I'm going to go back over and I'm going to grab that one as well. And now we're ready for it. So boom. And that pops up a new window over here. I'm going to drag it over. And it's going to think about itself for a while. Uh, there are other options that you can do like hidden and maximize or normal or minimized or whatever uh, I just for the purpose of this I leave it alone just so that it can do its own thing and I want to not hide the window because I want to know when it is done but if you hide the window you'll never see it appear and then go away we know it's done when this new window that spawned is gone And it's still thinking about it and it's going to think about it for a little bit and I'm probably going to pause the video. Yes. And we'll wait until it's ready for it to display something along the lines here. So coffee break. Oh, the tragedy. I am out of coffee. Three hours later. Ah, here we go. So. It's identified some sort of updates, and this is an update for Windows Defender. It did that, boom, it cleared out and is done. And that's because last night, which was Patch Tuesday, I already installed all this stuff on my system, so I don't need to worry about that any longer. And here we have this next one, which is to start our quick scan with the antivirus and we're going to let it think about this one for a little bit as well three hours later this should be relatively fast but uh pay attention to the lovely little clock in the corner when we finally get it all done so it pops up gives us some information saying that this is doing the scan and it even tells you the scan type which is handy but not necessarily important so once again, I'm gonna pause through the magic of editing. I'll come back when all of this is ready. Three hours later. And done. See.
takes a little while. And this is why you want to pop them into separate windows. That way you fire and forget. They're going and doing their thing. Whatever we need them to do. And, uh, and it allows us to continue operating in our main window to continue to do the other things. Because after the end of uh, those things, you know, we, we have our menu. And this is where the rest of all of this stuff comes into play. All the different things. Because the menu and the flows are the final actions... Uh, within our script, right? Everything else is already done, auto completes, and away it went. So, there you have it. All right, Event Cyber Warriors. What did we cover in this one? We covered how to spawn stuff in a brand new window to let it go and do its own thing while we continue to operate. Uh, we also talked about um, being able to. Uh, enable your firewall, uh, set up real-time protection for your uh, antivirus, um, and and initiate a scan and initiate Windows updates, uh, and the difference between Windows updates and Microsoft updates. Remember, one gets more than the other. You get a no prize if you remember exactly which one is which. Anyway, I uh, want to show you the script one last time before we go away before the competition but here we go all right all the way up to the top we have a number of things we've got a menu function user operations function um, and then we've got adding a new user we've got the parse sec poll we have set sec poll um, and then after that is all of the stuff that happens automatically. Uh, our uh, net results, our service results, the, the information that we enriched uh, with all of that, the run results, which are all of the uh, run and run once keys. Um, we turn off the auto admin logging. Uh, we turn on the, on the warning banner. Uh, we limit the blank password use, no LM hash, restrictive anonymous we set up, don't display the last username, uh, we clear the page file at shutdown, um, we disable the disable control alt delete, which is to turn that on, so it forces the uh, control alt delete to log on to the system. Um, we turn off the alert notification center just because that is, um, you know, alert fatigue. You don't need to have all of that for, um, for a lot of things. Actually, hmm. this I don't know how Cyber Patriot manages their notifications. They may be leveraging that. So for this, you may want to turn those off. Um, I'll leave that up to you, but that's something you need to consider. Um, but that won't affect your scoring. It'll just affect your awareness of the scoring. Uh, as long as you're checking your score uh, sheet or the score page from time to time, uh, you should be just fine. Um, we turning on the the firewall, we turn on the real-time monitoring. Uh, I show you how to check for a, a package that we need to have uh, and how to test for uh, dependencies, how to get past those dependencies, uh, how to spawn processes in brand new windows. Uh, we did the um, changing the uh, port for uh, RDP. Now you can leave it at, at the same port. You just need to make sure it's accounted for. Um, and that's that's perfectly fine. And then the rest here is all the menu-driven options. That covers everything we have. All told, 309 lines of code from all of the different videos. It's going to be, with this video, 25 PowerShell videos. Um, and hopefully yours is longer. You have more stuff. You have identified things that I miss. And this 
would be a good thing. And I welcome your recommendations for something I didn't consider. By all means, please comment below. Let me know what I missed that you think would help every team out there do better with the competition. And, and while we all want to be first, we all want to be the best and number one in the nation. Uh, I think that the more that we share information and more that we teach everybody else, the better off everyone is going to be in the long run. So, uh, as for always, Cyber Warriors, I hope you learned something. Happy hunting. Good luck with the competition. And I'll see you in the next video.